Hello and welcome to this vlog, which is going to be the day in the life of a PhD student. It's very important that you get all the buttons on. Okay, <laughs> it's very important that you get all the buttons on, just to make sure you're protected from from throat to wherever the lab coat ends, because sometimes lab coats are longer and sometimes are shorter. Next, I need to get my gloves on. Now that my gloves are on, we can continue with the experiment. So in this lab, it's a biomaterials lab. So my PhD is in biomaterials and biomedical engineering. And we produce nanofibers that can be used for many different biomedical applications, such as tissue engineering, drug delivery, filtration systems, and stuff like that. So my PhD specifically focuses on producing bandages for wound healing. And these bandages are both advanced because they are antibacterial, but also increase the quality of the healing, whether it's reduce the healing times or make the healing better, such as less scarring. So what we do in this lab is produce fibers from polymers. So I'll just show you, we have a polymer cabinet here with lots and lots of different polymers that we can choose. Whoa. And once we choose a polymer, for example, we must dissolve this into a solvent and that will make a polymer solution. So right now I have calcium chloride. I don't even think that's a polymer. So let's just have a look at it. Ah. Calcium chloride is a salt, but if you can see, the polymers usually come like this. They are either pellets or powders. So the first thing that we're gonna do to make the polymer solution is to actually get the polymer. Ugh. Now, we need to weigh the polymer. How cool is that? So what we need to do is weigh the polymer. So here is a glass vial and we're gonna make 20% weight of a volume. So that means that per 10 milliliter of solvent, there's gonna be two grams of polymer. So let's just add 10 mils. So we're only gonna make 10 milliliters of solution. Here is a weighing boat. So you can add the polymer to here and it will actually weigh with the scale. So switch the scale on, put the weighing boat on and zero the scale. Then we can get our measuring spatula thing and just weigh out two grams. That was very, 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 very messy, sorry. So obviously, as a PhD student, I'm very, very, very accurate. But right now, because I'm filming, like, it's not the best thing, so. You can't see, but it's actually exactly two grams. So I'm gonna pour the two grams into this vial. And so I'm gonna add 10 milliliters of the solvent. So the solvent that we're gonna use to dissolve this polymer, which is polymethylmethacrylate, just show you here, which is PMMA, basically just which is PMMA, which is basically just acrylic. And we're gonna use chloroform to dissolve the PMMA to make it into a polymer solution. Now, chloroform, you might hear it's dangerous and stuff, but really in our labs, this is like one of the least dangerous solvents. Dangerous as in like not good for your respiratory system, but it's fine, small amounts is fine. Do you know how like in movies, they use chloroform to like on a tissue and knock someone out. You really can't do that with chloroform. It will take a good two minutes of inhaling it for you to pass out. That's like with anything, you can inhale anything for straight for two minutes and you'll pass out. So it's not that dangerous. So I've transferred my chloroform into this. So I'm going to transfer 10 milliliters of chloroform into this polymer vial to make a polymer solution. Now the solution is not gonna dissolve straight away, but it doesn't matter because I have some polymer solution from before, which I'm actually gonna spin. I'm gonna show you the fibers and you're basically gonna get a really good day in the life of me as a PhD student in biomaterials processing lab. So here's the polymer solution that I prepared beforehand and this is PMMA, now it's actually dissolved. You can see how clear, well hopefully you can see how clear it is. So this is fully dissolved and this is one of the polymer solutions that we have that are not that viscous. So it's really runny and you'll think like, it's just like water, the consistency, ha, consistency. It's runny like water consistency, but it actually still fins fibers and this is exactly what we're gonna do now. So now we're actually gonna set up the setup so that we can spin some fibers and hopefully you'll see some nice fibers and you can get an idea of what kind of stuff we do in this lab. So behind me is the pressurized gyration setup. So this was actually invented in our lab. And what it is, is we produce fibers by combining centrifugal force with a gas pressure. What does this mean? So basically, we have this chamber and we have this thing here, hopefully you can focus on. And this thing is a small aluminium vessel. It's very, very small, as you can see, only 60 millimeters wide. It has many small holes in it. You probably won't be able to see these holes, but these are very small holes and it's attached to a high-speed motor. So this spins really fast. You put your polymer solution in there, you put the lid on. So the lid is then attached to 
some gas pressure and what happens is this pot rotates really really fast and there's gas pressure on your polymer solution as well the polymer goes through this vessel and because of the rotation speed which is the centrifugal force and the external gas pressure it kind of combines and compresses everything and forces it out through the holes and a polymer jet is formed and this polymer jet then dries and it leaves behind fibers which hopefully fingers crossed we're going to see today so before i start my experiment i'm going to get some foil oh i've got some lots of heavy heavy foil this is actually 300 meters worth of foil I get a bunch of foil and actually place it here so that when we collect our fibers they're not contaminated by anything else because contamination is like the worst thing that can happen in like when it's sent to someone in a chemistry lab when they test for stuff they don't want to see contamination that ruins their day and it ruins our day and we don't want anyone's day to be ruined so let's do that I like to put the dull side in the middle because when it's too shiny sometimes it's quite hard to see where your fibres are because they're tiny. Well we hope they're tiny anyway because we want to get as tiny fibres as possible. This is my least favourite part. Okay. It's kind of done. I hate doing this part. Oftentimes I just tell my students to set it up because I'm really bad at it and some students are really good at it, so why not, right? <laughs> so once the foil's up, you have to put this clamp back in. Now I'm gonna connect these wires to the motor so that we have power towards them. So this is a remote control that controls a remotely operated power switch thing. So in theory, when I switch on, the motor switch is on and I can switch it off. So it allows for remote operation. Especially useful because I have to apply the gas pressure as well at the same time. So now I'm going to test the gas pressure just to make sure that's working too. Can you hear it? Okay, seems like that's working as well. I'm going to get another syringe and what I'm going to do is take two milliliters of my polymer solution, put it into the pot that you saw, close the lid, apply the rotation speed and the gas pressure and hopefully we will get fibers. But before that, because of health and safety, I'm going to cover this so that, of course, you don't get whacked by the motor, which has never happened and probably never will because if this motor comes off for any reason, it's like a Beyblade, it just drops. It doesn't fall this way, but you know what? Health and safety is so, so important and wearing goggles is also very important. So I'm definitely gonna do that. How do I look? Two milliliters of solution, just two. Now the lid screws on with three screws, which is a bit annoying, but it's the best we have right now. Screwy, screwy, screw, screw. I don't know why I said that. Sometimes being alone makes me crazy it drives me crazy okay this is the wrong size screw screw this i'm just the worst oh no i am just the worst anyway that's three screws done so i'm just going to cover this with a simple mesh i'll cover it with this so that you can kind of see what's going on I'll just take my goggles off and hopefully you can see that we have fibers. Now these are quite thin fibers. As you can see, depending on the polymer that we use, these fibers will have completely different material properties. I'll just get a bunch here. Now look at this, they're so thin that they will actually just kind of float in there. So these fibers are particularly useful because they're very thin, which means they have a very high surface area to volume ratio. And also they're made from polymers, which means that, like I said before, depending on what polymer you have, they'll have completely different mechanical properties. They'll have different properties such as being biocompatible, bioresorbable, biodegradable, stuff like that. So depending on your know, applications such as drug delivery, tissue engineering, filtration, all sorts of stuff, wound healing, you're gonna want different polymers with different properties. They're gonna to have to be biocompatible because you're using them inside the body. They're going to have to be, you know, depending on the application, if you want it for drug delivery, they want it to be biodegradable quite quickly. If you want it to be long-term delivery, you don't want it to be biodegradable so quickly. So yeah, in this lab, what we do is we kind of change the polymer. We try to get different structures of fibers by varying the control parameters, such as the applied gas pressure, the rotation speed, the collection distance, and stuff like that. You actually end up getting very kind of different fibers. So here I have some some fibers that my students spun like maybe two years ago and as you can see this is more like a bandage type material I can kind of apply this to my hand and the mechanical properties of this is very different from what I spun before because I actually show you this so these are the two different fibers and obviously this one's very different and because this was made out of PMMA which is very brittle it's acrylic if you know about acrylic it's very brittle so just look at this what I can do is I can crumple it and it's gone can you see it's gone it's turned back into its powder it's literally that brittle it's all dust now. However, if I try to do it with this, it's still there. Like, well, 
it's still there. You can kind of unfold it and you can use it as a bandage. So like the properties are very different. This is not a brittle material. This is more flexible. This is made out of polycaprolactone and you can see like, yeah, it's not going to be the strongest thing in the world because they're actually very thin fibers, but you know, they will rip, but they are very strong for their size. So I don't know why I've destroyed this fiber sample, but I have, but I just want to show you that this is not as brittle as the other material, which has literally just gone to dust and you can't use it anymore. So basically that's what we particularly do in this lab. We have another lab where we use electro spinning, which is a different methodology. Maybe I'll show you another day, but it basically involves an electro spinning needle and a high voltage electric supply. The same polymer solution can be used, or sometimes lower concentrations need to be used but it passes through a nozzle, it's supplied to a high voltage electric supply and fibers are also produced. And Electrospinny has very, very thin fibers known as nanofibers. So during my PhD, I have published around, I think 15 papers now. So this involves working with other people, but also working to produce some sort of bandages for wound healing. So what we'll do is we'd use a base polymer such as polycaprolactone, like we saw before, which is very flexible and very bandage worthy and would incorporate antimicrobial elements such as for example i've worked with cinnamon and we actually added cinnamon to these fibers not only do they smell great but, but they are also antibacterial antifungal and they provide good wound healing experience and they're not too toxic to the cells i've also worked with many other things such as graphene worked with honey i've worked with bacterial cellulose and the list just goes on and on if you really do want to check my papers out i'll put them on the link in the description in my google scholar profile but essentially as a phd student you'll be doing experiments and hopefully the aim could be to depending on your supervisor you want to publish some of these projects and so publishing is when you first do it, it's quite difficult but publishing means getting results and interpreting the results and then discussing the results and putting them into a paper form and it's important because other people can look at your work and they can improve on it you add to the literature bundle the mountain of literature which is a good thing and a bad thing because it adds so much more things that you should read but every little person in every little group however small or big they are they're adding such a tiny amount to the science and that's what we can hope for as scientists and PhD students is to add to the literature add to the knowledge and hopefully breakthroughs can be made this way because science is very systematic it's going from it's literally everyone's working as little small ants in a particular field and one day maybe you'll make a big discovery right now i'm filming on a really nice tripod which i'm kind of envious of but not also envious because it's very heavy but check this out it's really cool look how smoothly it actually pans so cool hope oh, i'm staying in focus but yeah that's been a day in the life of a phd an awesome phd student at university college london in a biomaterials lab in the department of mechanical engineering i really do hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you want to see more of these videos and if you want me to explain how different technologies work what kind of stuff phd students do what you expected as a phd student all those questions i'm very willing to answer or even make a video on if you like this video you know what to do subscribe for more videos on not only my phd but also make lots of videos on being the best kind of person you can be like the meaning of life and stuff like that which is really interesting and especially as a PhD student you kind of you've been in academia for like 10 years and you kind of realize like you kind of think to yourself what is this all for and stuff like that so I kind of answer those questions I'm trying to live my best life kind of trying to gain knowledge and stuff so yeah make sure you subscribe and as always thank you for watching